Hi, I'm Alex, the Training and Events Coordinator here at the Small Charities Coalition. Alongside running events, I'm responsible for planning, managing and reporting on our vast range of training, networking and consultation events. Like many small charities, I often find myself doing too many things with not enough hands, often on small stretch budgets. That's why I'm here today to talk to you about my favourite digital tools that will help you save time, helping you get back to doing what matters most or having a well-deserved break. Crucially, a lot of the tools I'm going to talk to you today are either free or offer sizeable discounts for small charities. They don't require any technical know-how, they're very user-friendly and have great customer service and help guides. Let's get stuck in with the first tool. Let's start with the basics, the Google Suite. Everyone's probably familiar with Google, but what we probably don't know is the wide range of tools they have to help small charities. Alongside the standard Gmail inbox, to use the prop, you also have a very useful calendar to share where people are going and what people are doing every day, as well as Google Drive, which can essentially replace your office. You also have Google AdWords, Google Hangouts, Forms, Drawings, Maps, and so much more. Going back to Google Drive, that contains things to help you make high-end presentations, slideshows, documents, spreadsheets, the works. It can essentially replace Microsoft Office and the need for costly and fiddly licenses. You're not tied to your desk and you can access it from anywhere you've got an internet connection. At home, at work, when you're out and about, wherever. Crucially, this makes it really easy to collaborate and work with other people. For example, if I work with a good spreadsheet, I put it in Google Drive and my colleagues know where to find it later. Together, we can then work on the same spreadsheet, allowing us both to either view, comment or collaborate as we need to. If you're still receiving documents in a Microsoft Office format, that's fine too. You can work with them inside Google Drive in that format, or easily change them to a Google format for exporting and editing. This is all part of the Google for Nonprofits program, which they offer loads of these tools for free. This includes an amazing opportunity to boost your digital marketing in the Google Ads campaign. They offer $10,000 a month of free advertising credit on Google search ads. That's a lot of money for a small charity, and it can be very, very simple to access. It used to be very complicated to get hold of this Google Ad money, but now it's much simpler with the Google AdWords Express, allowing your charity and your cause to be seen for zero pounds. You and your team are collaborating and doing great work, but you need to spread the word. You could go out and tell people on the street randomly, or you could use MailChimp. MailChimp's a fantastic tool for emailing lots and lots of people, whether that's your service users, supporters, fundraisers, whoever. BCCing and using Google address books is okay, but it's very hard to get proper, actionable data from that, whereas what you need is a dedicated mailing list tool, like MailChimp. We love it because it's very user-friendly. It's very easy to create a list of contacts, which becomes your address book or lists. You can then segment them into the right order or group, and you can then send templates or campaigns, slotting your perfect content out to them really quickly and easily. It's very good at helping you stay GDPR compliant. It's got a wide range of FAQs and help tools, and it's very, very easy to use. There's lots more to dive into there, including automations, deeper segmentation, but if you're just sending a standard bulk email, it's very simple to use. Amazingly, all of this is free if you have less than 2,000 subscribers, and you have, if you have more, there's a 15% charity discount on any paid plans. It's well worth a look. So you've got lots of people engaged, but what happens if they come to you with questions? These days, there's all sorts of channels, whether you've got your, let's say, website contact form, your emails, Twitter, and Facebook. These days, people expect a quick response from all these channels, and as a small team, it can be very hard to stay on top of them. That's why we use a tool called Zendesk, which helps keep everything all in one place. This is now the complicated bit where these stretch metaphors become unwieldy and hard to use. Think of Zendesk, or Freshdesk, and we'll get to that in a second, as like a central hub where all of your messages come in. This allows you and your team to stay responsive across all the channels and platforms. You can also imagine it like a traffic warden, directing the right messages to the right people. The amazing thing about Zendesk and Freshdesk is they're all online. Rather than being tied to a phone or a help desk in one certain place, you can access questions and answer from wherever you are, whether that's volunteers working at home or you're out on the go. It has a really great range of tools to help automate your responses. It has templates, macros, and autoresponders to help you stay on top of things even when you're not at your desk. 
You can say goodbye to shared inboxes, chasing up emails and being unsure whether someone's being responded to or not, and instead you and your small team can focus on doing what you do best, being responsive, helpful and friendly to the people you need to be. It's a very low cost and Freshdesk has an entirely free starter plan, so if you're trying out for the first time, start there and you may need to go to Zendesk later. As an events manager, I find myself managing a large number of events all at the same time, and it can be very confusing to keep track of everything. That's why I use Eventbrite, to keep everything in one place. Much like your standard hammer, Eventbrite is an industry standard, used by massive conferences, festivals and third sector events alike. It's extremely professional, much more so than a Facebook event, and allows you to keep track of your attendees, their contact information, their dietary requirements, and much, much more. I use it to schedule messages in advance, to keep track of payment information and liaise with all the different stakeholders. Crucially, it does also integrate with Facebook, so you can do both at the same time. Amazingly, Eventbrite is entirely free for free events and charges a small fee for a paid event. So next time you're running an event for your small charity, have a look at Eventbrite and the range of tools it offers you. If, like me, you find yourself managing a lot of events, people or projects at the same time, it can be very difficult to keep track of what's going on where. Excel spreadsheets are okay for this, but they can very easily become confused with lots of columns and comments. So to keep everything on the level, that's why I use Trello. Imagine Trello is a big board of post-it notes. Crucially, they won't fall off. It allows you to create side-by-side -side lists, and then you move cards, or individual items, side-by-side -side depending on the project. For example, a lot of people use it for web or app development, a lot of people use it for weddings, conferences, or projects, but I use it to keep track of events. So if I have an idea for an event, it starts on the left with an idea. It then goes to venue confirmed, date confirmed, live, and then reported. It helps me keep track of everything that's going on. It's great for using as a team because it allows people to collaborate. You can comment, note, and even encourage people by putting little stickers on. Next time you have a planning meeting for the future, why don't you try digitizing it and putting it on Trello and see what a difference it can make. Because crucially, Trello is free for a starter plan and also offers a great charity discount for the paid plans. Now it's great if you're working on it as a team and collaborating on projects, but as we all know in the charity sector, if you can't measure its impact, it's not really worth doing. It's very important to measure everything, and that's where we use SurveyMonkey to ask the important questions across our events, support line and mentoring. Now the caveat here is SurveyMonkey is one of the more expensive survey tools around. There is a 25% charity discount, but Google Forms or Zoho might be more acceptable for your budget. However, we love SurveyMonkey because it's so user-friendly. It has a really great form designing tool with lots of suggestions, FAQs and customer service, and it's very easy to drag and drop questions in. You can send your survey out via a dedicated email sender, via a web link or via social media, all of which is really well measured and handled by SurveyMonkey. Crucially, SurveyMonkey data analytics are brilliant. Rather than exporting raw data and playing about with them as a CSV in Excel, SurveyMonkey handles it all on its own website, allowing you to create really simple and beautiful PDFs and reports for your funders, board, internal presentations, whoever you need to present to. Next time you're looking to gather some data, do give SurveyMonkey a go. Finally, let's take a look at all my favourite apps out there. It's a form of technical wizardry that links together all the different services and apps we've talked about and is very easy to use. Zapier. All you do is you give Zapier access to the accounts you have on other services, say Google or Twitter. Use a simple form on their website to make a workflow and it sends data from one place to another. Now there's no coding, technical know-how or permanent changes involved. It's very simple. There's lots of helpful suggestions on their website and it has lots of advice, especially for small charities on their blog. Now it's free to start using and playing around with and there's also a charity discount on any paid plan. Let's have a look at an example to help make it a bit clearer. On Eventbrite, I've got people signing up to attend my events. But if I want to share that with someone, it's much easier if they all go into a Google Sheet and so someone else can look at it. What Zapier does is it cunningly links everything together, so without me having to press a button, data from one is sent to the other. Let's look at another example. If I'm measuring an event and its satisfaction via SurveyMonkey, and someone puts in a negative comment, which, by the way, never happens. Zapier can link those two together. That negative comment from SurveyMonkey goes straight into my Zendesk in a much neater format than this, and everything's kept all in one place. 
it can save you so much time and it's one of the best tools that I use in the office at the moment. Do have a look at Zapier and see how much time you can save. Well that about wraps it up for today. We want to know what sort of tools you use. What do you find helpful on a day-to-day -day basis saving you time? We know we've missed a trick along the way and you may have a great use for a tool that we haven't looked at. Please do get in touch with us to tell us. Most of these tools have amazing help guides, support networks and online blogs giving you advice and inspiration. The best way to learn is to go out there and try things yourself. Because the majority of these tools are free, there's no harm really to be done. You can give it a go and see if it makes your life easier. If you need any help with anything, you can contact us at support at smallcharities.org.uk and you'll find links and information in the description below. We'll see you later.